I've known about dykes and bikes for quite a few years, but it took me a while to build up the courage to join the club. They call these the Harley, the baby Harleys, so it's only 500 cc. It's such an awesome and amazing feeling. What I do, I lead a very busy lifestyle and to get on the bike, you've actually got to just concentrate on riding. So it just enables you to have that space where you're not really thinking about anything else. Four wheels might move the body, but two wheels moves the soul. It was a great day. So we held up these placards, all of us. It was awesome. Of course, Jo, our president, she's always a leader. We have a secondary rider. Mm. It's usually a corner marker, and she'll stop at any corner we have to we have to turn at, wait for all the riders to pass her, and then she'll come round. The next thing you see, you feel this whoosh. And like what you were saying just then about putting our learner riders in, in the middle of the bunch so, you know, they're not left behind or anything like that. We stick together and we kind of... We protect them, we, you know, in the front and the back and just make sure that they're feeling, you know, part of the group. And every um, level of rider, you know, whether you're a learner or you've been riding for 20, 30, some people 40 more years in our club. So mm -hmm. we all just stick together. I've been riding my motorcycle for 35 years and I've tried to be in every parade I can be because I'm proud to be a lesbian and proud to ride a motorcycle. A couple of opportunities to ride further back in the group and to be honest with you I think I prefer that <laughs> um, <laughs> because I get to to see all the people riding in front of me and like and to see us all in our vests and you know our patches and it's like there's a real honor in that and to be mm. able to witness everyone riding together and, and you can just feel that everyone's having a great time and you're seeing going up the hill up the hill like it's just spectacular yeah. to see all these bikes and just to know that you're a part of that it's yeah it's really cool isn't and it? not to mention the roar of the engines <laughs> as soon as those bikes start they know it's happening like that's the signal when we go to mardi gras there's riders from all over the world that come that want to be a part of that you know and then because melbourne and sydney are quite close in time they will come and perhaps do both, you know? So we get to meet many riders from all over the world. Like we just belong to this one family mm -hmm. and that's what the sister, sisterhood is worldwide with Dykes on Bikes. I was heading off to uh, Northside Bazaar function with Dykes on Bikes, had a stall and I got half up the highway and then <laughs> because the push rod is broken, Not, it's not separating, so I can get it into first gear and neutral, but I can't find the second, third, and fourth gear. And I use all hand tools. I don't. There's one one part where I get me have to fire up me um, this thing, the air compressor. Uh, but I like to work. I'm old school. I like to work with hand tools. My, I was lucky enough, my dad made a motorcycle carrier on the back of the Mark II Zephyr. And he'd drive me to a paddock somewhere and I'd just go round and round and round and round because mum got sick of me driving around the backyard and cutting up all the nice lawn. <laughs> 30 years later, I go, oh, I'd like to really like to join Dykes on Bikes because it's always a bit mysterious. And, you know, goddesses, these women that ride motorbikes. It was just awe-inspiring for me. I thought, oh, I'll never be able to join. I won't ever be good enough to join them. And I did. And then I remember the now press saying, TJ, you've got to get legal. You know, you've got to get legal. So I went to Calder Raceway and got me licence. 
now I'm legally yep. riding with the club and I'm very, very proud. You always start with a fibre ring and then you end with a fibre ring. Growing up, I was tomboy. I was the first girl in Geelong to play footy, like Little League. Um, you know, riding bikes. I was the biggest tomboy in the world. So I was tomboy. And then the next step, I guess, was lesbian. But there was none of all these other labels. So you, that was the only thing you could identify with. But now I look back, there's probably other labels I could have identified with way more back then. Do you know what I mean? So mm. it's it's really exciting yeah. to watch the evolution of that. And it's, it's just so many variants. And it's really cool, I think. Mm. I love it. Melbourne chapter prides itself on being inclusive. And over the years, we've had quite a few trans uh, women as members. Um, if they identify as a woman and a dyke or a lesbian or, you know, a, a, a what is it, a woman who loves women, yeah, that's all we need. We are, we're an official chapter of the San Francisco Dykes and Bikes. And these are the year ones. Every year you've been a member. And on the other side, I can put whatever I like. We've got a, a patch that we wear on our backs, which is exactly the same as San Francisco, which they formed in the 70s. You know, the San Francisco Dykes and Bikes chapter and in the, in the 70s and the 80s, um, right through to the Sydney chapter in the 80s and 90s, and actually the protection that they provided for the community um, right through the age, uh, the, the, the AIDS and the HIV epidemic, and they actually protected a lot of these people. They looked after them. They worked in the hospitals. They were nurses, you know. Vigilantes. They, yeah, they, people on the street, gay bashings and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, they escorted mm. many of the boys home from nightclubs to get them home safely. <laughs> A lot of the times we talk about the lesbian bars and the lack of them these days and they're all closed down and stuff like this and where do you go, where do you hang out? And so well, we don't actually need a venue. <laughs> we just need to be together. So we've developed a series of visibility rides. So we've gone to places like Warnable, Bendigo, Ballarat, Warrigal, Shepparton. Um, Shepparton, and we invite everyone in the community to come and join us in a park. Bring all your rainbows and be whoever you want to be because we're going to be there and we're going to create your safe space. More riding, more riding. <laughs> more riding, let's get out there. If you've got a bike and you want to be a part of Pride March, we don't care what bike you ride, we don't care about what gender you identify or your sexuality, come and support us and let's just get loud and proud together. Um, it's the one day of the year where we should be together and celebrate mm. who we are together. So. For many years now, we've opened that up to everyone to come and support us. And I think our community needs more of that. We tried to get a helmet exemption for this year, but at the last minute, the police said, no, you've got to ride with helmets on. And why should we not be visible and out loud and proud without our helmets? We never get out of first gear anyway, so it's not dangerous or anything. And, you know, in Mardi Gras, Sydney, they ride without helmets, uh, chill out. There's quite a few events in our LGBTIQ plus community that uh, motorcyclists can ride without helmets. Why not? Out loud and proud.